And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Acts chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. Welcome back. Let's continue our Servantine journey through history's greatest novel. The complaint sung by Altisidora is another of Cervantes' burlesque ballads. The refrain is hyperbolic. Cruel Vireno, fugitive Aeneas, go with Barabbas, you belong with him. But notice how this transmits two ideas. First, amorous betrayal for Vireno and Aeneas abandoned Olympia and Dido in Ariosto's Orlando Furioso and Virgil's Aeneid. Second, defiant theft, for according to the Gospels, Barabbas was a bandit and a rebel released by Pontius Pilate before the crucifixion of Jesus. A moral and political transgression has occurred. At first glance, Altisidora's ballad, or Romance, is silly. She mocks Don Quixote's horse, your poorly governed beast. She exaggerates her sexual attractiveness, the most beautiful damsel that Diana ever saw in her woods or that Venus spied in her forest. She accuses Don Quixote of having stolen three nightcaps and several garters from her. You have taken three nightcaps and the garters off certain legs. And she even wishes him misfortune at cards and hopes that if he ever gets his molars pulled, they break off at the roots. As the son of a dentist, I can tell you that is a terrible thing to wish on someone. Did you know? The world's greatest rock and roll band alludes to Don Quixote in the last lines of its hit single, Emotional Rescue. But Altisidora's song is also damning in four ways. First, equating Don Quixote with Aeneas, who escaped Troy, but also abandoned Dido, is an anti-imperial gesture inherited from the great poet Garcilaso de la Vega. Second, when Altisidora curses Dulcinea, she says, for the just perhaps pay for sinners in my land, which as we saw in Don Quixote part one, chapter seven, voices Cervantes' main criticism of the Inquisition. Third, she accuses Don Quixote of having stolen her heart, her nightcaps, and her garters by using his garras, or claws, and his terras, or hands. But in slang, these terms also mean thefts and bags, alluding to Sancho's small purse with 200 gold escudos. Finally, according to the tortured grammar of the second stanza, Altisidora describes not her garters, but her own legs as black and white bringing up the issue of race again. So, Altisidora's ballad attacks the iconography of Habsburg imperialism, alludes to the injustice of the Inquisition, accuses both Don Quixote and Sancho of robbery, and hints at an erotic miscegenation rejected by Don Quixote. In short, the broken love affair between Altisidora and Don Quixote is yet another of the novel's allegories of the Morisco problem. And beyond Rocinante, the poorly governed beast surely refers to the governor Sancho's Rucio, as well as the Trojan horse Clavileño, which ultimately ties everything back to the multi-ethnic figures like Aldonza Lorenzo, Zoraida, and most recently, Ricote. Quixotic Mission. According to Altisidora, what color are her legs? A, mauve, B, Falu, C, black and white. Correct answer, C, black and white. The true hilarity of the episode and more proof of Cervantes' comic genius occurs at the end of Altisidora's song in the narrator's description of Don Quixote's reaction. During the time that sad Altisidora complained in the way described, Don Quixote was staring at her and then, without responding a word to her, he turned towards Sancho and said to him, For the love of your ancestors, dear Sancho, I urge you to tell me the truth. Tell me, have you, by chance, 
taken the three nightcaps and the garters that this lovesick damsel claims, as if Don Quixote's patient attention to Altisidora's ballad were not funny enough, his instinct is to accuse Sancho of having stolen her nightcaps and her garters. And Sancho's response, I am indeed carrying the three nightcaps, but as for the garters, well, she's off in the hills of Ubeda. By this last phrase, Sancho accuses Altisidora of being out of her mind. But we have to ask, how in the world did Sancho end up with three of her nightcaps? More humor follows. The Duke now plays along and insists that Don Quixote should return Altisidora's garters or else face him in a duel. If not, then I challenge you to mortal combat. Don Quixote is caught off guard by all of this, especially the accusation of theft. I, Sir Duke, have never been a thief, nor do I plan to be one ever in my life. But is this true? A certain barber and a few goat herds and innkeepers back in the Sierra Morena might disagree. In the end, however, Altisidora confesses that she has lied. I beg your forgiveness regarding the larceny of the garters, because I swear by God and my soul that I am wearing them. And I must have fallen into that careless state of he who went looking for the ass he was riding. Notice how Altisidora admits that she is actually wearing the garters. Note too, how she uses the precise legalistic term larceny, which is the issue of her song and which echoes the essence of Cervantes' critiques of the Inquisition and the expulsion of the Moriscos. Sancho responds that he would never lie about a theft, as if I would hide stolen things, which we know is a lie. Sancho also overemphasizes yet again the purity of his governorship, or if I had wanted to, I would have had loads of opportunities during my governorship. And with that, our heroes depart for the capital of Aragon, heading in the direction of Saragossa. That's all for now. Keep reading. The story gets even better. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.